is Messi! It is the cleanest of clean finishes from the best on the planet. It's time for the biggest sports stories. Liverpool, the champions of Europe, are top of the world. The biggest interviews. That uh, such a great spectacle is ruined by such, such thuggish behaviour. And all the analysis right here. He's the one player that has the arrogance to think that he can play in any stadium in the world and any pitch in the world in front of any player in the world and take them on. Every weekday, it's my sport, it's your sport. It's CFM Sport. Let's join the team for the biggest show in the world of sport on CFM Stereo. My station, your station. Kick off 2021 and ZFM Sport is back. The first show of season 2021 after a brief, some might say long, one month hiatus over the festive period. It's good to be back. My name is Mike Madod and with me, the usual strike partner, Barry Manandi. Baz, how was the holiday, buddy? It was okay, thanks, mate. Uh, I hope you stayed safe um, and uh, had an enjoyable time of it uh, during the break. Uh, I certainly did. Yeah, absolutely. You know, someone actually said that uh, the greatest achievement of 2020 was coming out of it alive. Uh, do, do you agree with that? <laughs> completely, <laughs> completely. And uh, look, you and I both managed. Uh, now, unfortunately, 2021 is a, is a Siamese twin of 2020. So we'll have to try and achieve the same coming out of this year. <laughs> Absolutely, and uh, the least we can do here on ZFM Sport, your favorite sports show, is to keep you updated, keep you entertained, and keep you informed with all the latest news coming out of the world of sport, local as well as international. It's the premier sports show anywhere on Zimbabwe Radio, and it's on the top station in the land. What can you look forward to? Today we have a special for you, a recap of what was happening on the home front while we've been away. FC Platinum booted out of the cafe. Champions League under controversial circumstances by Tanzanian side Simba Sports Club, but landing in the Confederations Cup where a tricky trip to Senegal awaits them. And we're also participating in the African Safari, this time with our Warriors, uh, who head out to Central Africa for 2021 Champ Tournament in Cameroon. We take a look at the troops in camp as well as their preparations that continued throughout most of December and resumed again yesterday after COVID ravaged nearly half the squad. We'll also keep you up to date with what's happening in international sport when we take you around the world in 60, as well as give you a beautiful game update. But before that, our power play. Here's Chris Brown and Young Thug. This one's called Go Crazy. I tell you what, if you focus too much on the pandemic and rather than everything good that might be happening in your life, you may just go crazy. The Warriors, the Chevrons, the Cheetahs, the Mighty Warriors, and the Sables. From the pool to the track to the field, we are Team Zimbabwe. The Home Front. Local sports news and analysis. All right, like we said at the top of the show, we're going to be giving you a special on FC Platinum and their ouster out of the CAF Champions League. And later on, we look at our Warriors and their preparations for Chan, which starts on Saturday. Yes, this Saturday. But first, let's give you a local sports news roundup, starting with football where Warriors right back to Ndadikwa's future at his English Championship side, Nottingham Forest, looks uncertain, with the club reported to be open to shipping him out this month, Cyrus Christie, on loan from Fulham, has been the trusted right back at Nottingham Forest, with Carl Jenkinson providing cover, rendering Ariqua excess and to look elsewhere for game time. And Ariqua suffered a ruptured anterior cruciate ligament before the end of the previous season, bouncing back at the end of the season as an unused substitute. We wish him well wherever he lands up. In tennis news, Zimbabwe junior tennis sensation Kudzai Chapepa continues to fly the country's flag high after clinching the under-14 girls Wilson Houting Grand Prix title in Johannesburg, South Africa on Friday. Kudzai, who's 12 years old, beat the top seed of the competition, Alma van Skalkveik, uh, 6-2-6-3, in the girls' final to land the silver, where she has been in South Africa since last month, together with her young sister Kuziva, Kuzvaishe uh, Tanaka Mshlanga and Emily George. The four 
girls train under Tesli Mufunda of Gap Sports Consultancy, who runs a tennis academy at the Ulayo Athletics Club. Wrap it up uh, with rugby news where Cheetahs and Matabela and Warriors rugby player Nelson Madida has resumed his training program and is targeting teaching Ulayo Western Suburbs children and communities about the importance of good health and fitness. Madida started his online training program at the onset of the COVID-19 enforced lockdown in March last year with the aim of helping fitness for fanatics keep fit. Since then, the program has attracted a good number of followers with some participants in South Africa and Namibia. The recently imposed lockdown will see him place more energy on online training to help sports persons keep fit for the duration of this particular lockdown. And that's a fantastic initiative, initiative, isn't it, Mikey, by Nelson Madida. Um, I think we all need to try and stay fit. I mean, it's been lockdown after lockdown and uh, um, almost sheltering in place uh, throughout the pandemic. And in truth, if you let yourself go, you can gain quite a bit of weight. Yeah, absolutely, Barry. I mean, uh, what uh, people have lost in terms of business, what they've lost in terms of money or health, they've certainly put around their waistline because uh, people (laughs) (laughs) people certainly have gained weight. And uh, the good thing uh, about January is that people are always resolute about losing weight and getting fit. The problem is it doesn't get past January. So when we get to March, April, (laughs) people are unfit and people are unhealthy. But this COVID pandemic, Barry, I think it's really just added urgency to the fact that we need to stay healthy. We need to stay fit so that we just don't, we're not in a place where we are vulnerable to some of these, uh, what do they call them again? You know, those diseases that are sort of like, that just creep up with me. What do they call them again? They've got this lovely term that they use. Uh, they call them, what do they call them, man? The, Come on. What, respiratory? What, what are you looking for? Right? No, man. <laughs> you, did you study biology? Uh, oh, the what opportunistic infection. Yes, opportunistic <laughs> infections. That's the word, Barry. <laughs> so the opportunistic <laughs> infections can ravage you if you, do, if you don't stay fit and healthy. And uh, Nelson Madida, of course, doing his bit online. And uh, you can catch him online uh, with all the programs that he's running out of Wulawai. Hi, I'm Varios Coach Zdravko Logarusic, and you are listening to ZFM Sport. Sports with a difference. Z. This is ZFM Sport, your favorite sports show anywhere on Zimbabwe Radio. We promise you that special on FC Platinum, and we deliver bad news. If you're a follower of Pure Platinum Play or you're out in Zishavane, the champions out of the CAF Champions League. But a bit of a soft landing, isn't it, Barry? If you're knocked out of the CAF Champions League and you manage to get into the Confederations Cup. Yeah, very soft landing, uh, especially given that in truth, with uh, only one slot into the African safari for Zimbabwe, uh, we've got to take what we can get. Uh, so I don't think FC Platinum will be shedding too many tears. I think it's the nature of their ouster of the, uh, from the Champions League that will hurt the most. But in truth, it's a, it's, a, it's a nice soft bed that they land on and hopefully they can make a real dent. So while the Zimbabwe champions are set for a new adventure in the Confederations Cup with a tricky group stage playoff against Senegalese football giant ASC Jaraf. The Zimbabweans who made a bitter exit from the Champions League will be back in action on February 14th, Valentine's Day, where they will be planning to show no love to the West Africans in the first leg at the National Sports Stadium. The return leg has been set for the following week at the multi-purpose Stade Demba Diop in Dakar. The Platinum Miners were demoted to the second tier competition after losing 4-1 on aggregate to Simba Sports Club of Tanzania in the first round. Now, Barry, before we get to Simba, let's talk about the Senegalese side, AS Jaraf. It's a team that not many Zimbabwe football fans will be familiar with. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, in truth, the fact that we're not familiar with them doesn't make, make them any less formidable as a foe. They're actually the biggest and most successful team in Senegal. They've got 12 league titles and 15 domestic cups uh, in their trophy cabinet. So they're quite decorated when it comes to domestic competition. Do Dimbare Yog Senegal, in other words. Just, exactly. just to put it in lay terms. 
Yeah, 100%. And uh, you look at it, they, they, they vanquished uh, FC San Pedro uh, uh, on away goals in the group, uh, uh, the Confederation Cup group playoffs. Uh, and San Pedro um, is from the Ivory Coast, if, from if, if you could, correct me? 100%. Yeah. So if, if you look at it from that perspective, it's a team not to be to 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 think that they're slouches. Let, let's, uh, I think uh, FC Platinum needs to prepare well for these games. But in truth, with what we've seen of FC Platinum, the quality that they have around the field, they should be able uh, to dispatch ASC Jaraf. Yeah, absolutely, Barry. But they'll, they'll be smarting, won't they, uh, FC Platinum? Because they had planned to be in the CAF Champions League. Uh, they got the bed of Costa do Sol of Mozambique quite comfortably over two legs. And then they got Simba Sports Club. I remember when you and I talked about this, we said that Simba Sports Club were going to be a different proposition both on and off the field. And it's no surprise that it's actually issues off the field of play that have actually dogged the conversation, that are dominating the conversation because there's that con COVID controversy. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, FC Platinum, five players told that they couldn't feature in the second leg out in Tanzania because they had positive COVID-19 results. Three team officials as well including team manager Joseph Mususa, goalkeepers trainer Tembo Chuma, and their medic Jeskaya Chaburura. They were also told that they'd returned positive COVID-19 results. Now, the players that tested positive, captain and goalkeeper Petros Mari, influential defender, big boy Lawrence Mklang at the back, Silas Songani was expected to add a bit of spark and creativity in attack. Ransom Paviri, as well as Congolese forward Eli Elunga. It's a blow, Barry, that FC Platinum didn't recover from. They didn't. And uh, if you look at uh, the first uh, four of those players that you mentioned, apart from Eli Elunga, who was a second half uh, substitute in the first leg, all four of the players, Mari, Mlanga, Songani, Pavari, are starters. They started in the Harare leg. And they are players who uh, Norman Mapeza was resting upon. Certainly three of them, Songani, who was coming from an injury. I mean, Songani didn't start the, the, the first leg because uh, he was injured, but he's a player who was definitely going to start in uh, Tanzania. He certainly would have started if he was fit. He would have started. Parari started in Harare. Mflanga started in Harare. Mari started in Harare. All key positions in uh, goal, in defense, in midfield. And so it's almost a, a strategy that Simba SC used to weaken FC Platinum in, in, uh, in, in vital positions. And you can see why then they didn't then target the star players because they didn't want obviously for it to be overt if Simba SC was involved in any shenanigans around the COVID results. So it's a concerning one. Now, Barry, the, the cynics will say you have a squad. It's not just 11 players that turn out on any given match day. You've got players on the bench and more than the players on the bench, you've got a full squad that amounts to anything between 30 to 35 players at the FC Platinum. But the problem here is these results were actually revealed to FC Platinum at the 11th hour, which meant that Norman Mapeza went about the business of preparing his team with those players who he expected to choose on match day and then was only told at the 11th hour that those players were not available. Tell us about the importance, Barry, of that move, that foul move by Simba SC, because that's what people suspect. They expect suspect their involvement in all this. 100% and, and uh, l l let's just clarify why we suspect it was Simba SC. When the results came out, they were given by the medical, the lab, to Simba SC. Simba SC is the one that then released the results to FC Platinum at 1 p.m. on match day. What happens at 1 p.m. on match day? You are supposed to be arriving at the match venue. So FC Platinum left the hotel thinking that they could play a certain amount of players and only to be told that those players weren't available for selection. Now, to answer your question, the importance of that move for Simba SC and its significance to FC Platinum is that the mental preparation for the players who then ultimately replaced the players who were now no longer available because they returned uh, positive tests, they were never going to be ready and up for this game. Because when you are a player and the team has been announced, your mental preparation, if you're on the bench, is very different when you're told you're in the starting eleven. So for those players, they were never going to be and, up for it. And, and, and the show didn't, Barry. 
It showed and, and it showed, yes. I was going to say that it actually showed because uh, the player's character was called into question. If you take a look at their temperament, Barry, there was a sense of injustice and yeah. their heads were just simply not in the game. And that contributed to their downfall, especially at the end, Barry, where they conceded those two late goals. Heads just simply dro uh, dropped. Heads dropped. Uh, the, the, the attitude towards the game was that it's us against the world. It wasn't about what they had prepared, what, what they had gone through, the, the, the things that they've been told by their technical team, uh, the, 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 the motions they had gone. They arrived in Tanzania early, so they had acclimatized. Everything was on point up until those COVID results. And I think they destabilized the entire camp. And it was it was hopeful and wishful thinking uh, that we could have hoped for a better result. And uh, look, if Simba SC was indeed guilty of all this, and it points, everything certainly points in that direction, they played their cards absolutely expertly. And the reason why we point that is that immediately after qualifying for the group stages, what happens? Their coach, uh, Sven van den Broek, uh, resigns. And uh, under unexplicable, uh, conditions uh, clearly he wasn't happy with how things happened off the field well Barry it's more than just a suspicion because if you remember there was a similar complaint that a complaint that was lodged by Nigerian outfit Plateau United who experienced exactly the same predicament as FC Platinum during their preliminary round versus Simba Sports Club so this is a card a hand that they have shown before. It's not just FC Platinum, but it's almost every side that they come up against. They always have something to say about the skullduggery and the underhand tactics of the Tanzanian champions. But let's move away from the suspicions. Let's move away from the hearsay. Let's go onto the field of play, Barry. And I take a look at the two legs. The first leg of the National Sports Stadium, which you and I were privileged to watch. And then the second leg, Two key moments for me. Perfect Jaquenda with the opportunity to make the game 2-0 sure. at the National Sports Stadium. Fluffs his lines. Ralph Kawondera with the chance to equalize in Tanzania. Yep. Fluffs his lines, Barry. And it's on those two chances, I think, that this tie was lost. I would, I would, I can't argue with you, Mike. You hit it uh, the nail on the head. And in fact, when we were at the National Sports Stadium, I remember we remarked to each other when Perfect Chiquende uh, failed to finish that late chance that fell his way. Uh, well, he created it himself. Let's be fair on the mat, uh, and was unable to to complete it and get that second goal. We actually remarked to each other that we hoped that that chance would they wouldn't rue that missed chance, and unfortunately, they they ended up ruining it on the basis that they weren't able to get over the line. Going into Tanzania 2-0 up, all they needed to do was just get a solitary goal and that, that tie was going to be so far out of the hands of Simba SC, there was no way back. But unfortunately, they went in with the, the solitary goal and it was never going to be enough. Oh, well, there were off-field controversies, Barry. There were two chances that were missed. Chikwende, the national sports aide, Kawondera, with the miss of the decade. Yep. He should have scored that. But somehow, he missed that opportunity. But okay, let's move away from there, Barry. Let's take a look at the match officials because a lot of Zimbabwean fans, a lot of pundits, a lot of commentators have been very hard on the match officials and they've accused them of bias. They've accused them of not being up to scratch and for blowing the whistle in Simba's favor. Two incidents for me. First half penalty that's given to Simba. I want to hear your thoughts on that one. Sure. And then the FC Platinum penalty shout in added time, which in truth, had that gone in, had that been given to FC Platinum, yeah. had that gone in, Simba would have had their backs to the wall with limited time to try and get a goal that would have seen them sail past FC Platinum. Most certainly. Uh, the penalty that was awarded to Simba SC in the first half for me was a penalty um, because the infraction starts outside the box. However, it is then completed inside the box. So in truth, uh, if you look at the rule book and, and the laws of the game, uh, that is a the condition under which a penalty is awarded. So uh, in truth, no bias. Let me stop you there, Barry. Yeah. Let, let me stop you there because uh, anyone who watched the game and I think sometimes there is a mistake that many people make when they're sort of like analyzing penalty incidents in that they tend to think it's where the infraction or the infringement starts. Mm. But it's not exactly that. If the infringement then carries on, okay, to the penalty box, or in this case versus Simba, it continued to the line. 
And yes. the line belongs to the penalty area. Box, it yeah. meant that it was a penalty. Yeah. And that's something that people need to look at. It's not where the infringement starts, but if it does continue from a yard out to the line, then it will be given as a penalty. So there's really no controversy in that. Let's go to the FC Platinum penalty shout, Barry. The referee surely they bottled it. The, the referee bottled it. Uh, am I going to call it biased officiating? No. Uh, on the basis that it's a hometown call. There, were, there, was virtually, there was so little time left on the clock. I think we were in the 85th or, or something minute. Uh, and uh, the FC Platinum player is literally barged off the ball in the box. It is a penalty. Yes. But the referee considered a full stadium. Uh, it's a, a call that potentially could decide the tie and the referee decided against giving that penalty and in truth he bought but, but the that's decision. poor referee isn't it's it poor ref- it's, it's poor, poor refereeing. refereeing it's not biased refereeing so i'm 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 what do you mean weary. it's not biased it's he they've just made a decision in favor of the home side so it is biased referee you know, if we looked at this if we look at the strictest terms fine but in truth to then say that the the referees were were had vangade marim soaks I'm not going to rush to that conclusion as yet on the basis that I think that was the one call that I can definitively say the referees bottled it and made a decision in Simba's favor that would have turned so, the tide. So, so you have seen those given and sometimes you have seen those not given. Correct. And the tragedy is what happens immediately after that phase of play is that Simba goes up the other end of the pitch and scores a goal. That that that's really where the the insult is added to the injury. Uh, so for me, I think that the, the, the referees just bottled that decision and in truth uh, wasn't a sign that there was anything that they were on the take or anything like that. Was the referee on the take? <laughs> we want to hear from you. Get in touch with us on our social media handles. We are on Facebook. We are on Twitter as well, where you can follow and interact with at ZFM Sport or even us in our individual capacities. We'd love to hear your thoughts as we take a look back at the controversial circumstances surrounding FC Platinum's demise or their departure from the CAF Champions League. And they'll now take part in the second tier competition, the CAF Confederations Cup. Now, Barry, as we wrap up this discussion, I want us to touch on the tactical approach by FC Platinum over the first leg especially. Did Norman Mapeza show too much respect to Simba? Because there is an overwhelming feeling, Barry, even though it was a very convincing 4-1 aggregate scoreline, there is an overwhelming, a sense, a sense that, listen, Team Yanga isn't going to bore you, Simba. No, Simba, Simba. FC Platinum could have beaten these guys and and beaten them well. Was Norman Mapeza negative? Was he too defensive? Did he show them too much respect, Barry? I'm gonna I'm gonna expand it beyond just the the, the Simba match because if you look at both legs of the Costa do Sol uh, uh, games that they played uh, the one in Mozambique and then the second leg here in Harare the first leg against Simba in Harare and then obviously the second leg out in Tanzania Norman Mapeza has almost adopted a philosophy whereby. I don't know whether it's just for the qualification phase and maybe he's going to change it in the group phases, uh, but he's adopted a philosophy where he wants to make FC Platinum hard to beat. So it's very defensive, it's, it's very tight, it's very compact. Uh, they're hard to break down and he doesn't necessarily forage forward until after the hour mark or at least in the second half if he needs to. In every single one of those games, uh, the, the uh, both legs of the of the first uh, tie against Costa del Sol and the, these ones against Simba SC, he's played exactly like that. That's why they've scored more goals in the second half in that qualification phase of the Champions League than they did uh, uh, in in the in the first half of games because he wants to keep it tight. I don't know whether that's the best uh, uh, strategy because in truth. Had he attacked Simba SC like we know FC Platinum can, I think there was something to get out of this game. There was a lot more than the 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 note, the, the zero scoreline that ended up coming out of Tanzania. In truth, they could have scored quite a few goals against that team. They didn't have much in the tank whatsoever. And uh, the, the the case of Rafael Mudubiwa, I think it's it's one that probably also needs touching on Barry. We saw when FC Platinum was beginning to chase the game uh, in Tanzania, he came on and he added that impetus on the right wing where he was now sending in the crosses. He was linking up well uh, with the, with the right winger, with right midfield. And that was the attacking threat for FC Platinum. And one couldn't help but ask the question, 
why hasn't Rafael Mudoviwa been playing all along? Yeah. He's been sitting on the bench and yet he's probably their best right back. In fact, he's actually a wing back. He's got a good cross on him and he's someone who knows the FC Platinum way very well. He's someone that Norman Mapesa has played uh, for uh, uh, the time period when Norman Mapesa was at um, uh, AFC Platinum. He trusted him. In fact, Norman was willing to let Ian Nekati go yep. because he saw in Rafael Mudriwa a very good wing back, a very good right back. And I just don't understand how a player who has been influential at FC Platinum over so many seasons, all of a sudden finds himself on the bench. And the the the, the insult on top of that injury is the fact that uh, Norman has opted to play Gift Mbweti uh, as his right back in many of these fixtures uh, and then only push him forward when Rafa Mudaviwa comes onto the field of play. So you're playing a, a, a player who isn't a natural full back or wing back in that position and yet you've got a naturalized player who can play in that position uh, or we can only assume if it's not an issue of fitness an issue of re- injury recovery uh, then it's well, an issue of tactics. Very, was it a, a, an issue maybe when you talk about tactics was it the issue well Rafael Maduri was probably the shortest guy uh, yeah. at FC Plan. was it an issue where Norman was thinking okay you know what the Simba guys are a bit robust they are tall they are athletic perhaps he will be bullied and uh, perhaps uh, when it comes to set pieces, which Simba have a reputation of being good at, he felt that uh, Rafael Mudoviwa uh, would mean that he would be defended with a man down. Could have been, could have been. But uh, I also think that uh, what then you you lose on the swings, you gain on the roundabouts, especially when you come with uh, uh, Rafael Mudoviwa. Because in truth, yes, he does. You you get that detraction, but the pluses that he brings to the team, I think, are well worth playing. Okay, FC Platinum, like we said, they'll no longer be in the CAF Champions League, but they'll be taking part in the CAF Confederations Cup. We're just taking a look at their performance, their controversial uh, game versus uh, Simba Sports Club out in Tanzania. And of course, uh, going out and a lot of controversy off the field of play as well as on it. But they can leak their wounds now in the CAF Confederations Cup and really give it a go. But first up is a very tricky two-legged time versus Senegalese football giants ASC Jaraf, the Dimbare, the Chazunguza of Senegal. They've got their work cut out. It all starts on Valentine's Day of the National Sports Stadium on the 14th of February. This is ZFM Sport. Coming up, we give you some international sports news. And then on the other side, after our play of the day, we take a look at the Warriors. Alcohol may be hazardous to health if consumed to excess. The operation of machinery or driving after the consumption of alcohol is not advisable. Not for sale to persons under the age of 18 years. Castle Lager is more than just beer. It's pure liquid gold. Crafted from the finest local ingredients to deliver a taste that is somewhat dry, somewhat bitter, but never sweet. It's the taste that stood the test of time. It all comes together with a castle. International Sports News Roundup, where the world comes out to play. Around the world in 60 seconds. International sports news. We take off down under where a courageous and injury wrecked India pulled off a remarkable draw in a tense third test against Australia earlier today as they survived against the host's much vaunted bowling attack to take the series into a decider. Now the Spice Boys resumed day five at 98 for two, needing a further 309 runs after being set a huge 407 to win when Australia declared their second innings at T on Sunday on 312 for six. But India gave it a massive go, fraying the nerves of the Australian team as they threw everything they had at them. The fourth test will be played at the Gabba in Brisbane. Over to South Africa in a move designed to bolster the Sharks' ambitions of becoming a global force in world rugby, the KwaZulu-Natal franchise has welcomed a dynamic new investor as their majority partner, MVM. I wonder if Mike is involved in that holdings. An international investment (laughs) (laughs) cohort spearheaded by Marco Masotti has entered into an agreement to purchase a 51% majority stake in the Sharks. The current shareholders, the KwaZulu-Natal Rugby Union and Supersport International, will hold the remaining 49% 
of the franchise. MVM Holdings is expected to bring significant finance, sports and management expertise and resources to the Sharks franchise. Let's see how that one goes. Should make for very interesting reading. Touching down in the United States where as coronavirus infected players, contact tracing quarantines and ancillary injuries, thin rosters of available players, the NBA has no plans to pause the season, a league spokesman told ESPN. Now, some team executives have privately raised concerns in the turbulent past several days, but Commissioner Adam Silver has remained committed to pushing through games with a minimum of eight available players per team and trying to complete as much of the schedule as possible possible prior to wide-scale access to vaccinations that could start to bring normalcy back to the league and country. And those vaccinations could bring normalcy to the world. The big leagues, the big teams, the big players. The beautiful game on ZFM Sport. Time for the beautiful game. Don't forget, later on, we'll be giving an update out of Europe. FA Cup results, a bit of Serie A, and of course, some transfer news out of La Liga. That you can look forward to. But first, let's talk the Warriors. They're gearing up for Chan 2021. It's in Cameroon, and it starts, my goodness, on Saturday, as soon as that. And uh, the squad got into camp in December managed to get a few training sessions if we can call them that done and then broke for christmas came back and half the squad had COVID. mikey this camp has been an absolute shambles for varying reasons yeah absolutely barry and uh zimbabwe will not be ready uh let, let, let me be the the harbinger uh of bad news uh we're not going to be ready for that opening encounter uh and uh to be honest it's going to take a heroic performance from the boys uh to stave off defeat versus the host cameroon uh in the opening match of chan 2021 why i say so barry is that um COVID has ravaged uh, our team the infections have meant that the boys have not been able to prepare uh, for the last two weeks. There have been no yeah. preparation time. And when I talk about preparation, I'm talking about preparing for the tournament. What we saw in December was not preparation for Chan. It was a selection, an extended selection process by Logarisic and his lieutenants. Because uh, that's all we saw, Barry. Day after day, week after week, it was practice match after practice match chopping and changing players dropped I wanna, players added more players added more players dropped mike i want to get your sense of that very uh, uh selection period yeah and that's a good name to call it i'm gonna borrow that from you uh, because what you had are those training matches however were they necessary on the basis that yes we don't have a league functioning uh, but the team that was selected was largely made up of the team that helped us qualify for Chan in the first place. And then a few players uh, that the coach had seen for, with his own eyes, uh, uh, players like King Nadolo, players uh, uh, like uh, Pao Goere, uh, who he picked and said he wanted to see them in the squad. Was it necessary for us to go through that entire where we played anyone who had a willingness to play? Barry, uh, I would not talk so much about the necessity of having done that. But what I will say is that it's an indicator that uh, there is no trust between Logarisic and his lieutenants because we understand that the lieutenants are the ones who largely uh, spoke up and selected the players uh, based on their knowledge of the game in Zimbabwe, being coaches that have uh, uh, been working in Zimbabwe for years uh, and having played in Zimbabwe. And so they had an extensive knowledge, Barry, of the football landscape. And they selected those players as resembling the best players in Zimbabwe. And some might say, hey, it was based on reputation, but that's all they could go on because there was no football being played in Zimbabwe and there were no teams that were training. So. They chose those players, but it looks like Logarisic didn't respect them and didn't trust the quality that had been given to him. And so he went about uh, basically disbanding that squad, Barry, because right. if you take a look at the squad that's going to Cameroon <laughs> and the squad that was initially chosen, it bears very little resemblance, Barry. Yes, there are players that are there uh, in that squad that were there at the beginning, of course, the likes of Ariel Sibanda, the likes of Simbachinani of Dynamos, the likes of Peter Mudua and Patson Jaure. Uh, but if you take a look, Barry, there have been a number of players that have now been added. I mean, 38-year-old Tawanda Nyamandwe yeah. of Manika yeah. Diamonds. I mean, who would have thought that he would be on the plane to Cameroon? Well, he's going to be on the plane. 
Denver Mukamba, you and I, Barry, were privileged to watch that training session, that training match versus Ngezi Platinum Stars. For sure. And he forced the hand of the coach. I can understand his selection because he stood out quite clearly as being the best player on the pitch. And therefore, it would have taken a very foolish man to ignore the exploits of Denver Mukamba. Sure. And so he forced his hand. But if you take a look, Barry, at the likes of Carlos Muvurume from Caps United, yeah. you know, those guys who have come in, Tafazo Jaravani again from Caps United. Mm -hmm. You take a look at players like... Um, uh, Richard Hachiro think, from Caps. Uh, Richard Hachiro, uh, Farao Matare from uh, Bulawayo Chiefs. All those players have been added in. And we're not saying they're not bad players, but we're saying that they're not... They were not the players that were there at the beginning. And also, Barry, it was a bit, I would say, a bit unfair uh, on some of the players that were initially selected. Because when you were selecting a player based on his performance, playing in a team that's his, that he trains with week in, week out, in a system that he knows well and he understands, and that has he has been in it for a long time, He's likely to play well, as opposed to a player that you have put in a national team setup. In fact, you've done no team shaping. You haven't done anything of that nature with these players. They don't understand your way. They don't understand your methods. They don't understand your philosophy and you are expected them to shine. They're still trying to find their feet in your system. And some of the players, Barry, that were knocked out of Logarish's squad. Yeah. You know, it's a crying shame because mm. these were really good players that could have actually contributed to the Warriors cause. But unfortunately, the haphazard nature of Logarish's selection saw them on the out and other mm. players on the in. Yeah, and certainly some players that uh, we thought would, would certainly be on that plane, the likes, uh, the likes of Valentine. I mean, Frank Makarate. Frank the, the, the capable uh, yeah. Ngezi Platinum Stars captain, central defender, yeah. one of the best defenders in the league, Barry. Uh, I thought he was a shoe in I actually thought he was a shoe in to play in that central defense with Peter Mudua of Highlanders. Yeah. But he's on the out. He he's didn't even out, yeah. make the squad. Yeah, absolutely. And Thomas Chideu, a man with size, with ability, with a good shot on him. Uh, again, like you point out, there's a, the other aspect of fitness. Because remember, yes, you're looking at players who are playing in, the, in their own system. But you go, you're looking at players in your squad, the initial squad that was selected, who haven't had a kick of football for many, many months. And uh, all they did in that period was those practice matches. Then Lugarasic decided on the 20th of December that he's going to release people, players to go uh, on their Christmas break. They came back, Mikey, and they had COVID. Yeah, and they had COVID, Barry, and uh, the, that's the real kicker now. That's the real reason why I believe that uh, it's going to take a heroic performance from our Warriors to do well uh, in Cameroon at that tournament because we're going in with uh, very little preparation. Uh, those that were close to the coach and spoke to him and when they raised their concerns around, listen, we are playing too many practice matches and we're not actually preparing the team. He had said that, oh, listen, when we come back yes. from the Christmas break, that's when we're going to prepare the team. That's when we're going to do things that, uh, that are specific to the tournament and to how we're going to be playing in Cameroon now. COVID had other ideas, Barry, and he's literally going to have one or two days or three or four practice sessions to try and get these guys up to speed. And the real concern, Barry, is that we are in Group A, along with host Cameroon, who have already played a couple of practice matches, by the way, international friendlies in the last two weeks. They have. We are up against Burkina Faso and we are up against Mali. All those three countries, Barry, in their, country, in, in their, their leagues are fully operational. Yeah. So that means their players have been getting game time, they've been getting competitive action. So in terms of the fine tuning, they're going to be at a higher level physically yeah. as well as mentally than our players. So much more. And uh, in truth, playing that opening game on, on Saturday, uh, one can only hope that we will either pull a rabbit out of the hat or at least keep the, the, the scoring margin decent on the basis that playing a Cameroon side, which as far as we understand, CAF has approved uh, a modicum of uh, spectators in the stadium. I think it's 25% of the, the stadium capacity. Uh, there will be a vociferous yeah. crowd. Um, so we are, everything is against us. Uh, and it's in those conditions that perhaps Zimbabwe rises to the occasion. But in this sense, I can't see Zimbabwe rising to the occasion. Not a kick of football in our domestic league where our players are unfit. They haven't been able to train for the past two weeks. Yes, they've been kicking around the ones that didn't have COVID, uh, that returned negative tests, have been kicking around, uh, around the yeah. hotel and doing fitness in the hotel, uh, which isn't good enough. 
they recently returned to field practice and training uh, with the technical team because the technical team tested positive as well. The preparations have not been ideal whatsoever. And let me ask you this, Barry. When you, when you run your eye over that squad uh, that's been selected, uh, and in truth, we can talk about the players that have been left out uh, and the players that could have gone. But uh, when I take a look at that squad, just take a look at the names. It is quite a good squad. It is. There's some really good players. You know, Ariel Svanda, the Highlanders goalkeeper, very good shot stopper, backed up by Simba Chinani, Nelson Chajga of Ngeziplan, Peter Mudu of Highlanders, Patson Jauro, plenty of experience there. You take a look at the likes of Ian Nekati, he's in the full warrior squad. So yes. he brings experience and ability. Kadar Amin, he's bounced back from a serious injury, is in there. You've got the young Warriors captain Andrew Mbeba of Highland, this promising defender, is in there. You've got Paolo Gomeri. Barry, you must be brimming with pride as the Golden Eagles are chairman to see one of your own catching the plane to Cameroon and a fantastic player. Very few people know about him, but he's a player that has caught the eye and everyone, all the naysayers, all the doubters, when they've attended the Warriors training matches, when they've attended the training games, they've all been pleasantly surprised that Paolo Gavera is there on ability. Yeah. Buzzing, Mike. Buzzing. Absolutely buzzing. I think the whole Golden Eagles organization is buzzing at the moment uh, on the basis that we all knew, we all, and, and there, there, there are three or four other players within the Golden Eagles setup who could easily have made this squad as well. But Paul Govere is one of those who is absolute quality. And uh, the truth is that he absolutely richly deserves it. Is it a sign, Barry, that uh, with scouting, with our coaches really running their eyes uh, around the country. There are a lot of diamonds out there, a lot of rough diamonds out there who, if they are given opportunity, who, if they are given a platform, can actually rise up to be national team material. Because this is Paolo Governor, who was, uh, you know, uh, a player that very few people knew until he was selected by Logarisic. Logarisic having been impressed by the young man in a training match versus Golden Eagles. Yeah, 100%. Uh, and if our scouting is spot on, uh, in the highways and byways, just like uh, Reinhard Fabisch did for the Dream Team. If we go out wide enough, we can find the talent that can actually de deliver the goods. But it starts with a plan, with a way that we want to play. At this stage, we don't know how Loga wants to play. Uh, we are not sure what sort of team is going to line up. Because even if I were to ask you to put a probable team together, probable 11, I think you would you would struggle to put uh, together a probable 11 because yeah. what system <laughs> he wants to play uh, so consequently we wait to see how these players that he selected are going to fit in that uh, plan come the start of Chan and it all kicks off this Saturday we played the opening match against Cameroon the hosts in Yaounde and we hope that our Warriors can do the business albeit that the preparations have been far from ideal the Castle Premier Soccer League La Liga Serie A the English Premier League, the Bundesliga. It all comes together with the Castle on the Castle Lager World Football Report. Plenty of football happening on the continent, but of course, uh, the big highlight will be the Chan tournament in Cameroon that kicks off this weekend. Our own Warriors involved in that opening match versus the indomitable Lions of Cameroon. It should be a cracker. And we are just keeping our fingers crossed that Zimbabwe can do the business despite the challenges in our preparations. But there's also plenty of football that's happening in Europe. And let's give you an update that starts in Italy, where Inter Milan's title push took a knock yesterday as the two or draw at rivals Roma allowed AC Milan to finish the weekend with a three-point lead at the top of the Serie A table. Champions Juventus also benefited from the stalemate, powering up to fourth with a 3-1 win over 10-man Sassuolo. Inter are three points behind Milan, who beat Torino 2-0 on Saturday with Roma, a further three points points behind in third. Juventus are just a point behind Roma after claiming a third consecutive win for the first time this season, chasing a first Serie A title since 2010. Inter playing Juventus in the San Siro next weekend in what could be one of the defining clashes of the season.
over to England, where Leeds suffered a humiliating FA Cup exit against Crawley as the League Two side swept to a stunning 3-0 win, while eighth-tier Marines' hopes of causing the competition's greatest shock were crushed in a 5-0 defeat against Tottenham after the spiking coronavirus pandemic wreaked havoc with matches across the third round on Friday and Saturday. The FA Cup was back on more familiar ground on Sunday as Leeds became the competition's latest big name to be knocked out by a feisty underdog. While Marine's romantic adventure was cut short by Carlos Vinicius' hat-trick and Chelsea and Manchester City progressed to the fourth round with ease, Corley's unexpected success encapsulated the FA Cup's unique charm at a time when football is badly in need of some positive news. And in other noticeable results, Manchester United beat Watford 1-0, Liverpool marched past the youthful Aston Villa 4-1, and Arsenal edged Newcastle 1-0 after extra time. Let's wrap it up with some transfer news out of Spain, where Atletico Madrid are in talks with Olympic Lyon to sign French forward Moussa Dembele on loan until the end of the season. The League One club sporting director, Juninho, has said Atletico are looking to sign a striker to boost the La Liga title charge and check Champions League knockout hopes after Diego Costa left the club this month. Uh, Barry Mabasa Atino Kadewere Kaya. I mean, yeah. he's now sent Musa Dembele packing in search of first team football after a fantastic start to his Lyon career. Absolutely. I mean, we, we looked at it when he signed for uh, Lyon and we thought to ourselves ahead of him will obviously be your Depay, your Dembele's. Uh, and in truth, he has been, he's now the mainline striker uh, at uh, Olympic Lyon and credit to the young man. And you've got to uh, give credit to the club, Barry, because uh, they have just simply rewarded form. They haven't gone with reputation because when we sort of like took a look at this before the start of the season, we all thought that Tino Kadawe at best would be a backup striker yep. and that some of the bigger names would be selected ahead of him. But the coach has gone on form. He's rewarded Tino Kadawe's fine showings playing in that right channel on the right side of attack. And he's kept him in the team ahead of uh, more seasoned players and players that have been there a lot longer than uh, Kadawere. Yeah, no credit to the to the to the coaching staff, to the entire club, uh, that they have made decisions on the basis of football rather than reputation. And and you can tell by their league position, they're doing well in league one. Yeah, absolutely doing well. Talking about the major leagues of Europe, we've got a special with you for you on a Friday. We'll be taking a look at where things are and where things are heading as we head towards the business end of the season. In England, could, be, could it be a dream title race featuring the Manchester teams, City, United and the champions Liverpool in Spain. Barcelona, are they as bad as people say? Real Madrid, are they as good as people say? Just three points separating those teams. Atletico Madrid holding all the aces. They look like they might be crowned champions this season. In Italy, it's all very interesting. AC Milan look like they're back. Inter will have a word in that and Juventus will be defending their crown on Friday. We'll pick all that apart. My goodness, Mike, you just whetted our appetite and we hope that we've done the same for you. Lots of sport to talk about, lots to talk about here on ZFM Sport. We're back. We'll catch you tomorrow. May God richly bless you. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. But Andy, out. And it's Messi. It is the cleanest of clean finishes from the best on the planet. The biggest sports stories. Liverpool, the champions of Europe, are top of the world. The biggest interviews. That uh, such a great spectacle is ruined by such such thuggish behaviour. And all the analysis right here. He's the one player that has the arrogance to think that he can play in any stadium in the world and any pitch in the world in front of any player in the world and take them on. Every weekday, it's my sport, it's your sport. It's ZFM Sport on ZFM Stereo. My station, your station.